just test the mics. Can you hear me at the back? Yeah. 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 Oh, good. And can good. you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> It'll work for both of us, I think. This is going to be a test of how well you share, because you get one mic <laughs> between the two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping it. Oh. <laughs> so, Nikki French. Now, it's a little bit confusing, because if I say Nikki, you know, it, it might be, it might get both of you. So if I say Nikki, I mean Nikki, and if I say Nikki French, I'll mean the both of you. There we go. Good <laughs> housekeeping for myself, too. How long have you been in the country? When did you get in? Well, we, it's rather comfortable. We, we're asleep, slightly jet lagged still, so we, we're not very good at dates. I think we arrived Wednesday midnight. Okay, wow, okay. Not, um, but not yesterday, I mean, not eight, eight days. No, no, no. Today is Wednesday, eight, <laughs> day, eight <laughs> days. So we are to be we <laughs> are a very simple first question. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and have you done anything? extremely Australian so far. Have you had a Sambo at the Servo in the Arbo? Or <laughs> have you had a well, Lunnington? You can, you can deal with this. Nikki. Have you yelled Aussie, Aussie, Aussie at a crowd <laughs> and seen oh, what they no, do? We need to have tuition. We're going to go and do all of these things. We haven't done any of those oh, things, I don't list. think. Yeah. We have eaten oysters and swum in the sea and... Oh, yeah. And I met lots of wonderful Australian people and... Yeah, Nikki's been swimming in the harbour every morning. In the harbour? Yeah. Oh, wow, don't do that. Just <laughs> 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 oh, it's just oh, you wow. swim there and you're just oh, surrounded wow. by all these buildings and boats and you can say, it's just wonderful, okay. London can learn a lot. Oh, right, okay. We've kind of fallen awesome. back in love with Sydney. We came here first in 1998. After our very first novel was published, we celebrated by taking all four of our tiny children to Australia. Wow. And we towed them around Australia and we loved Sydney then and we love it again. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad you're having fun. Well, the fun continues because um, they asked me to interview you and I, uh, and, and I got no brief, really. I, I think they just assumed I was going to do a straight interview. And I thought, will I do that? No, I'll do something a bit more, more interesting. Oh, oh God, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, because you're, you're here and you're, you're doing a book tour and I know, having done book tours myself, you, you go around and you get asked the questions and you answer and everyone has a fun time. But I thought, um, if you'll bear with me a little bit, I've got something more interesting for you. We are and real worried. Yeah, <laughs> it's a performance. No, um, and, and it involves us collaborating hey it's the theme of the night collaborator collaborator collaborating um so what it is you, you will have to give me a second or two to set it up just bear with me uh, crime fiction is a, a genre that people um, across the years have felt that they have to defend every now and then um you know and, and you've heard people say oh you write penny dreadfuls that kind of thing and and the defense comes in two Two different ways. They they sort of say, well, um, really smart people read crime fiction, um, and the other way that they defend this genre is they say it's really hard to do. There are all these very specific rules, right? So um, since 1913, there have been so many different writers who have put together a set of rules. I have some examples. So Carolyn mm. Wells wrote the te the technique of the mystery story. Uh, S.S. Van Dyne wrote 20 rules for writing detective stories and Elmore Leonard wrote 10 rules for writing which had things in it like never open a book with the weather. Yeah. So, which, <laughs> which we've done. <laughs> can I just say it for that I know that, that the, uh, can I just point to the first sentence of Bleak House by Charles Dickens which is one word, fog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The big sleep as well. So yeah. we can, we can, if we ever, if we run across uh, Elmore Leonard at any point, um, we all we'll have our way. <laughs> Take uh, So you know, I was digging around looking at these lists, and I couldn't find someone. You see where I'm going with this? I couldn't find someone who'd written a list for collaborating on a crime oh, novel. Okay. Uh, okay. See? Right. Yes. Okay. So I thought my part is the easy part. I'll start the rule off for you. Mm. And then you finish it. Oh, we and have the same rule that we're finishing that you're starting. I'm starting okay. it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Can okay. we not do the other way around? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. See, there are rules. And 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 the, the the hard bit for you as well is you weave in examples from your current work and your current book. See? Okay. So do you want to play? <laughs> 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 
I feel we're stuck here. So, yeah. <laughs> I was let's, like, what? Let's, let's go for it. <laughs> let's go for it. Okay, all right. So, um, so, so rule one, according to Nikki French, Nikki French's rules of collaborating on writing a crime novel. If you want to collaborate with someone on a novel, you must first... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's very excellent. Okay, we're going to go with that. I, I'm going to give a serious. I'm, I'm going to give a serious answer to that because I know people who have tried to. Because when we first, um, uh, did, did, when we did our, publish our first book back in 1997, there were various friends of ours who thought, well, if they can do it, we can do it. Mm. And they, the, the, there were two couples who did it, and they, it was an absolute disaster. And I think that there's um, my, you know, I, the, I think what you really have to do, and it's any kind of collaborate, uh, collaboration, is it has to be based on a kind of trust that is not a struggle for power. And I think if there's, I think often the the, the problem, and I, I think if there's any feeling that one is a kind of dominant, or if there's a feeling that, that say that when we're collaborating. If Nikki has a particular novel that she, that, that story she wanted to tell, and every time she starts writing, she's trying to force it into that, it, into the thing she originally had, even though we talked about agreeing, you know, it would just collapse. We would, we would have collapsed ten pages into our first book. Mm. I think that has to be the feeling that when I email what I've written to Nikki. Uh, and she's, you know, allowed to change and rewrite and edit. If I, I, what I you know, I'm sometimes, I, sometimes I may feel that my absolutely beautiful prose has been tarnished <laughs> <laughs> and, and despoiled. Uh, but it's about, it's not because of turning it into a Nicky Jarrett novel. It's what does, what does this, what's the story need? And it's all about the story. So, so I'd say you need, to, if you're going to collaborate, you just have to trust the person you're with and it's not going to be a battle for power. Okay. Okay. And is that how it worked out the first time? Tell me about that first. See, I'm going to put questions in there. Yeah, as yeah, well. it's very, very, very yeah, easy. Now then, okay. The first time you had this idea, you, I imagine you're sitting on the couch having wine and you go, you know what we should do? We should. It, was it something like that? Well, yeah, it was a bit more extended than that. But we did have a. When we first met, we were both journalists and we were both kind of avid readers and. We, every time we wrote anything, we were each other's first reader and first mm. editor before sending it off. And we just had a conversation about what is it, what is a voice in a novel? You know that intimate thing you get as a reader when, you can, when you're being spoken to by the writer. And, and could two people make one voice? Mm. And then that became, could we make one voice? And then we thought that one day, when our children were much older, and when we had time, and when we were just not so chaotic, one day we would kind of try, try to see if we could. And then we came across the idea for the memory game, and it, we felt it was, a, but which it was about the controversy of a recovered or false memory, and, and people were being sent to prison on the evidence that they of a memory that they retrieved during therapy, these vivid memories of abuse, and the question was, was this real or not real, and we thought, A, we thought, that is terrible, but oh my God, that's a good subject for a thriller, and B, we thought, if we don't do it now, mm. someone else will do it, which was really useful, and in fact it was true, when the, when the memory game came out, shortly after it was published, this quite well-known writer came up to us. And in a bit of an annoyed state, and he said he was halfway through his recovered memory novel when our novel came out. Because so like, and, and it it, it, often, it, you know, as you know what it's like as a writer, you can oh. always find excuses to put off the act of writing. You need a bit more research. You need to kind of wait until you're kind of of sound mind, uh, or mm. you know, or you have kind of more space in your life. Mm. And there's never a right time. You have to do it now. So that was very useful to us. That kind of kick into the urgency yeah Ooh, I like it okay and so with the name so you're thinking to yourself we're going to have to combine our voices to make a new voice and we will name him or her this you know how did you do the mechanics of that you mean do you mean our name or the name the name Nikki French the, like, no, the name Nikki 
Yes, that was awesome. incredibly. That was really <laughs> we'll boring. Take your next we'll take <laughs> no, so we always knew it was going to be one name yeah. because we wanted people to read it as one voice because that's what we wanted to write. And yeah. We always knew it had to be. We thought it should be a female mm. author because the first person narrator who was and who was narrating the memory game was a woman, so it felt kind of more natural. Yeah. And then we thought. Then we got. Scrabble tiled actually, we tried to make an anagram of our names ah. and, we, and we came up with these ridiculous names and then we came up with names that weren't quite so ridiculous and our publisher just kept saying no, 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 so then we thought well, okay, Nikki in French, yeah. well, it's quite boring really. Keep it simple, well, I like that, okay, alright, good. Rule number two. This is very nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's because they're put, they're being put down, they're being locked in as yeah, we yeah. write them. No, it's okay. <laughs> you look so worried. I just went to a university challenge, and I, this is almost as nerve wracking as being on university <laughs> challenge. <laughs> That's different. Hopefully, this is the best interview you get uh, into interview while you're in Australia. Look, um, you mentioned that when you're writing on this thing, you email it to each other, um, and so you're not working on the same laptop slash Mac slash mm. whatever. So rule two is about workplaces. Work, workspace assignment is incredibly important. Make sure you never work in the same room as each other. <laughs> <laughs> you can give an example. No, no. I, mean, I can give an example. Um, we, so, yeah, uh, uh, Nikki works in... Yeah, we, I mean, we really... Uh, we work as far away apart as it's possible to get. <laughs> so I work in where we. I work in a shed out in the garden, which is actually we, I got. It's like one of these things you can get built and made out of wood. And, a man and, shed. And I walk. Yeah. It's exactly. A man, a man shed. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, very gendered, this, because I'm yeah. up in the attic. And yeah. so actually, I went and took my laptop and walked to some. Where, where I couldn't get get Wi-Fi, so uh, to try not to be distracted by the outside world. And Nikki works in an attic at the top of the house, and it's really, um, you know, the um, the old expression: you shouldn't see how laws and sausages are made. I and mean, you could add that you shouldn't see how Sean French writes, <laughs> because I, I mean, Nikki is, you know, as a, just as a writer, is, I can say, just super focused. And you know, I sometimes think that if if Nikki were writing and a, a bomb went off outside the window, she'd finish the chapter and then get up and see what's happening. Whereas me, if, if a bird flies past, I have to get up, go out and look, go and look it up, you know, go on Twitter, then go back and try and write something. So, so I think, I think because it's also, for, I mean, I, if I'd been, you know, when I was younger, when I heard about people collaborating, I thought this was an old Hollywood thing, you know. Yeah. Someone's at the typewriter tapping away and someone's walking up and down and you're firing dialogue at each other yeah, yeah. we never it would that would be a catastrophe for us we write we always have we write on our own separately and send it to the other thing you know. yeah I'm, I'm going to just add no. to that thing about distractibility we did have one day when we worked in this rather small room together just for technical reasons yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was really, it was, a, it was a very illuminating experience. I, w I was there, I mean, I don't think I come out of this very well, but I was there at kind of quite early in the morning at my, at my laptop. And then Sean came in somewhat later and he very nicely made me coffee and then he thought we needed more coffee. So he, we talked about that and then he came back in with more coffee and then he said, um, what are we going to eat for lunch? And then, we about that. <laughs> and, then, and then he said, what are we going to eat for dinner? So then we talked about that and then he, he had a crossword in front of him, so he did a crossword two or two. Um, and then, and talking about a bird flying by, you know, then he, he wanted to identify the birds, what they were on the bird table, so he got a book out. And we, I was sitting like six inches away from him. Uh, and then the final last straw was he said, I've got a great idea. We're going to learn Russian together. And then that was it. <laughs> But I've never, I've never actually written anything at all myself. Yeah, at all, yeah, at all, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, um, uh, then my next thing, my next, my next question, because I, I don't want to be one of these interviewers that talks about them how themselves the whole time. Um, but being a collaborator as well with James Patterson, mm -hmm. there's this heavy scepticism about there's, there's no way that this can be a cake that's cut 
cut in half and you write half and he writes half. Who is the top dog in this relationship? And if, if you're sort of fluttering around like a butterfly and you're like, nah, 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 how do you keep it like fair and even? And that kind of thing? <laughs> You're flushing around. Okay, but <laughs> I, want to talk, I want to ask you as well. well oh, you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I think the. I think there are different. I mean, I'm. I'm really fascinated about how right. You know, all the details about other writers write, you know, uh, and particularly different when people collaborate because it's. You know, there are. Because I, I think sometimes people think, oh, it's really rare. It's not that rare. There are yeah. quite, quite a lot of people who collaborate, and usually. In a way, it's a, most. I think most other people I've met do it in a more sensible way than we do. That yeah. in that there's a sort of uh, apportionment. You know, you're, one of them is good at something, or you know, the, or they divide. That maybe the more uh, police procedural things are written by one uh, one one partner, and mm. the more kind of literary things are written. So by Sean the other. can do the violence, and yeah. I can do the cooking. And of. we've, ne <laughs> and we've <laughs> absolutely <laughs> never. So we've we've ne we've never. I mean. When, we, when you say about equality and all that, it, it's very clear that you know when there's research needs to be done, it's not, you know we it'd be logical if one of us went and did it, we both have to do it. If we go, you know, we, we, if there's if, if there's a place where it's going to be set, we both go there. We do all the planning together, and and then but then when it comes to writing, it's separate. But there's no feeling. Uh, again, I've had other people. Where it's very clear that one of them is one person gives up more of the ideas, and that the other does more of the writing. It, there's nothing like that, so I think that, that there is just a feeling that we're both yeah. putting that strange Nicky French mask on and becoming Nicky French, and yeah. it's, it's just e equal. And I, again, I think if there had been a feeling that there was, it, well, I could definitely say if, if there'd be a thing if I was just telling Nicky what to do, <laughs> it, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, you know, I think it, it, it really has, it has to be a, kind, a sort of equality. But, you know. I want to touch on the research because I did a bit of research on you and I heard you talking in one interview about the two of you cycling around London mm. looking, researching, researching yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we do, do you know, everywhere that our characters go, we go. Okay. And that, that thing about, I mean, you probably agree, that thing about setting in a novel or in, in a thriller, it is absolutely crucial. So that. And a lot of our novels are set in London, and they're set in very peculiar parts of London. The whole of the Free Decline series, an eight-book series, yeah. and she was a night walker. Yeah. She followed secret rivers that kind of went underground, feeding into the Thames, mm. and they go in very strange places. They're not picturesque. It's yeah. not in the beautiful tourist part of London. It's kind of through kind of brambly scrublands and things. Mm. And every step that she took, we either walked or sometimes cycled with her, because you just have to, you have to know what the ground feels like, you have to know what the air smells like, you have to kind of, you have to feel yourself there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And point things out to each other maybe and say this. Yeah, right. absolutely, absolutely. And often ideas come out of settings, I think. It's yeah. not just that the setting has to fit the idea. Sometimes, sometimes ideas have to fit the, the setting. Yeah. Do you, do you agree with that? With your, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be interviewing her now then. Ah, yes. <laughs> this is where we switch over. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. There were particular settings in this novel which were very rich for me. Um, I don't want to spoil anything but Jude has to move into this apartment uh, very suddenly and and I was wondering if you guys were sitting there having that conversation going, remember that place we lived in and the horrible cat and the, you know, the plastic chopping knives and all this and it, memories well, come up maybe. I mean, you know, I mean we, we use our own things like that. I mean, all the time. I mean, there was a particular example with um, the lime room. We, well, this is, I mean, it's been, it's one of the strange things uh, with having, uh, you know, when we first wrote our, our when we were in the memory game, we had, um, well, the, you know, there were four children under the age of nine, I think. And, and it, one of the strange things as they've grown up and started reading our books, it sort mm. of changed our relate, you know, it, it's been a, a strange process. And I think some of our books they found kind of quite uncomfortable to, to read. Yeah. But, but one, the the the, li the lying room begins with a woman uh, going arriving at a fl an apartment where she's conducting an adulterous affair and finding her lover dead on the on the on the floor and it's extremely clear to anyone who knows that this was a flat that we lived in. It's, no, right. absolutely, <laughs> it's absolutely precisely described and yeah. the place you could actually walk, you probably find. 
flat by reading the book. Yeah. And the, for, for our children, who spend quite a few of their formative years in this place, <laughs> I, you know, I think it must have been a bit of a. You know, so, but yeah. So again, the, the, but I think it, uh, but, uh, but I think that absolutely things like that. Uh, uh, a place like this house in the. Uh, I mean, just to explain very briefly, the, I think the, the one of the ideas of, of um, you know, when, when Jude d does this favour, and it's partly because she, Jude's been a kind of good girl, and she's, and she's reunited with this love, first love of her life, who's a kind of bad boy, and, and in a way it represents this idea of, she sort of feels this kind of wistfulness about not being one of the cool people, and she suddenly, in this book, has his chance to step over to the other side and see what these kind of wastrels and dangerous, dangerously exciting people live. And this is symbolised by a particular ha house in north northeast London, which is very much. I mean, it's, it's, I'm trying, in that place, it's only an area we know very well. Yeah. I, mean, I think we've all been to strange parties. <laughs> Nicky probably more than me. I think. <laughs> but uh, it was yeah. So that I mean, we often, uh, and a house like that, when we're writing, is as much is, is as much a character in the book yeah. as it, as one of the one of the characters. And, 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 I, and going back to you know, what we we're saying about settings, I mean, when I think of my favourite thrillers. It's usually, um, you know, you want, you want a satisfying story and a satisfying resolution, but actually, when I think of my favourite thriller writers, it's almost as much the setting. It's kind of, you know, the kind of Elmore Leonard writing about Miami or D Detroit and, you know, and mm. Chandler's and Los weather. Angeles. And the, yeah, in the way. <laughs> you, know, so, um, you know, so we give a hue that's extremely important for us. All right. Is anyone keeping count? Am I up to rule three? <laughs> okay, yeah, because now I've mucked myself up. Because, look, um, uh, for rule three, I've said people say there's a top dog in each collaboration. The truth is. So, rule four. Uh, rule four. See, see, the thing is, for me, when I came into this uh, assignment to interview you two, I thought, you've been talking about your collaboration for so many years, you've probably got all the stories about how it goes well, but what I'm, I'm a, I'm a bit of a chaos addict, you mm. know, my favourite show is Married at First Sight, because I just like to see, I just love to see people fighting. Um, my husband pulled me up on it the other day because I was watching it and I was going, fight, fight, fight. Um, so, so I do want to touch on that um, because I, I, it all sounds like it really works like a well-oiled machine here. But you've been doing it for so long, I know that there must, there must be fights. So rule four, fighting with your collaborator over plot points or character will... Destroy your marriage. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, actually, you know, we, you might think you're like a well oiled machine. We are a very rusty, creaky old machine. We are not, we are not, we're not like each other. We have very different sensibilities. We write in very different styles. We, we, I mean, when I say we argue, I think I argue when Sean goes, very silent and <laughs> sad and disappointed yes, in yeah. <laughs> No, we, but we, we can squabble over anything. Okay. But we actually, we do not argue over the writing process. We do, and, and I think that goes back to what Sean was saying about trust, is we, and I think we, it, 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 we haven't kind of written it into a contract, although actually when we first signed the contract for our first two novels, mm. we had to write something about what happened if, if we got divorced, what was happening right. to the French. Right, um, yeah. But so, so, so we, if we started kind of arguing over for plot points or what the character would do or anything like that, yeah. it's just dangerous. It would just, it, I think it's just like, we know it would be like a bomb going yeah. off. We want to start not trusting each other yeah. and not behaving. And also, you know, you're talking about when things go wrong. It is really strange and quite painful to have yourself rewritten. Yeah. Um, and, and to kind of, give somebody your precious words and have them changed or taken away and you it's a, a very delicate process and we absolutely have to kind of we've got this unwritten pledge to each other that we are just going to behave well over that that we're no. not going to argue about that and we've stuck to that very very I actually think you're <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's well, well, no because we, we do we, you know I think we're just like we are not more you know we're, we're not well, yeah, I can say I I'm not a mature person. We have awful <laughs> arguments. I can accept this. But I think there's a certain... I mean, 
I think professionalism isn't the right word, but you know, yeah. writing is so hard and things go wrong with it. And so, to, I'm going to take examples. Um, uh, we, we have, a, you know, more than once we've written a third or almost a half of a book and just thought this is not working and huh? junked it. And one time yeah. we wrote a whole book and in the end we showed it to our agent who said she, she thought we should have another look at it. And we did have another look at it. Yeah. And we thought, you know, we, we can't fix this. And we jumped a, a whole book that wow. had taken us almost a year to write. Yeah. Now, that's, inc- you know, as we're talking about learning Russian. We could have learned Russian <laughs> in that, in, instead of writing that book. And if it was, if it was if, you know, you can imagine at, at a point like that, if I'd suddenly said, you made me write that book, you know, <laughs> and look what happened, you know, I, I never wanted to. You know, I think we, you have to have a feeling you're, you're just in this together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that it's, you know, it's about, and it's, a, it's all about the book. That's nice. That's really nice. It's not always so nice, but it's, 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 a, it's an essential survival. You know, I think, it, I think it just, I mean, also, that's part of the, you know, I mean, to, I mean, there are real, you know, when it's going badly, writing together makes it almost worse because there's nowhere to hide from each other. Yeah. And, but when it's going well, there's something about two people, I think there's the two of us spurring each other on and mm. writing for each other. It's as, I think it's more rewarding than writing on your own. So it's, it's, there's two sides to it. You dropped in a really interesting word there, Nikki, trust, because you you said you've got to trust the other person. We haven't really covered how much plotting you do. Are there times when you sort of, you know, you take the novel away and you say, just trust me, just trust me. <laughs> we're going to go down, it's going to be good, it's going to be good. I'll, or I'll leave no. you somewhere so, you can no, get so, out. But, so, no. So what we do is when we, we, we plan it in some detail, so we don't plan it chapter by chapter, we need the novel to be able to kind of take us to places we hadn't known we were going to go. Um, and we, when, we, when we write, we're kind of free to write whatever we want, but it's got to be going along the kind of journey that we've that we've planned out. If I suddenly think, oh, I'm going to really surprise Sean, I'm going to change who did it, or I'm going to just think <laughs> you, you mean trust me like that? No, yeah. we don't do that. I mean, I guess trust is... So, but, but we do. But one of the things that's surprising about writing together is because it's... You know, because we're writing by ourselves and we're kind of going down that strange rabbit hole that yeah. you sometimes get, go yeah. down when you write. And because writing can lead you to unexpected destinations. It is true that I can write something which I kind of want to surprise Sean with and vice versa. So it's like we're spurring each other on in yeah. that sense. But not not in a way that will just blow up the whole book. No. Yeah. And the trust thing, but the trust it, it goes it's, it's it's it kind of goes further than that as well. It's about, you know, writing sometimes you're just ridiculous when you write. So you can write you know, you it you have to be Uncensored when you write, yeah. you have to kind of. Then you can censor yourself a bit when you edit it, and you can yeah, see. Yeah. But when you write, you have to kind of be kind of vulnerable, and you have to be embarrassing, and you have to try things, and you have to fail at things, mm. and that's quite exposing, and it's very exposing when you're handing it to somebody else to show them. So yeah. that is that kind of trust as well that we can look stupid in front of each other or fail in front of each other or show each other kind of strange dark places in our imagination that feel very private and, mm. and mm. yeah. I like that. What a nice relationship. <laughs> <laughs> nice come round at breakfast. <laughs> yeah, come round at breakfast. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um, okay, so the favour. I want to drill down more on the actual favour um, itself uh, and and the novel and the specifics of this novel, but I have one more you know, rule just about collaboration. And you're so, such nice people with such a nice relationship. Um, I think uh, it's, 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 it's good to tail it up with, with, with rule number five being a nice one. <laughs> the hardest part of writing a novel with someone is made easier because Okay. Oh follow that sentence. <laughs> 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 the hard, oh, yeah. the hardest part. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, tell me what the hardest part is. Well, I'm going to give, I'm give a very glib answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that. There are times where, you, where you're just, 
you you get stuck and you can just say you deal with it. You know? Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I, th- I mean I think there is that way in which just there is so you know you like to two mountaineers rope together and sometimes one of them has to haul the other one along. Yeah. So I think that would be, yeah, I don't know if that's, Nikki can probably say something more. Profound. I'll say something. It's kind of catching me more. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is it the title, exactly. of, one of, title of one of our books? Uh-huh. In fact. Um, and yeah, that, that thing about, you know, Sean was saying you kind of help each other. I mean, that thing about when you, I can be lying in a very long hot bath and think I'm writing. In my shed, I'm writing. That's quite, that's quite nice to think that's yeah. still but I just in a more kind of general way I think that that what we're doing together is we're kind of exploring the world together Mm. so each of our novels we're kind of taking something that we don't quite know the answer to something that unsettles us or makes us fearful and we feel that we need to kind of to look at and we're doing it together so there's a way in which you know, our novels are not, thank God, autobiographical, because otherwise, you know, we'd have had a very bloody old life. But they, what they are, there's a kind of autobiography of our emotions in there, the things that we've been thinking of, the things that we've been thinking of together. So it's been an extraordinary, yeah, a kind of joyful adventure that we've had together through exploring the world by writing about it. You guys are the nicest people in crime. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> can, I, uh, can I get a little? I want to need a recording. The next time I'm having a really awful row, I want to yeah. play back. Nikki, listen to this. We're yeah. a very nice yeah. couple. And I'll, I'll, be there, I'll be there at the window, like, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm actually going to add something to that. We once wrote a short story, and I'm trying to remember the exact donny of it, but it was based on arguments. You know that thing where. It was a short story where you had to put the rest. Where you, you know, where you think you wish you said, "I did this." They say, "No, you didn't." And you wish you'd written it down. You wish God could come down and yeah. put them. And we wrote a short story based on that kind of horrible feat, that horrible domestic rage you can get mm-hmm. with the other person. And it turns out he has been writing it all down so he can show her that everything. And then bad things happen. <laughs> I think that's why there was so much footage in the Johnny and Amber trial, which I, you know, I, we all have established I'm a horrible person who likes chaos. I watched the Johnny, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard was fixed to it. And there was so much uh, footage because they wanted to record each other to say, yeah. see, see, yeah, see, exactly. what you yeah. Said? yeah. Did you take a side? Did I take a side? No, this is not about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no. No, oh, there are times in my career that I get grilled about things, and this is not one of them. This is you. <laughs> so, no. Um, the favour. The favour. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're it's very it's good at avoiding. We'll talk about it over yeah, dinner. Okay. Um, look, uh, yes. Um, now listen. Uh, the, we've got five minutes to talk about the favour, the favour. Um, and uh, I just want to point something out. Did you know that in this book we've got Fox, the investigator, mm. and mm. her partner at the beginning, Patterson? Oh, oh Fox and Patterson, oh. I was like, they're big fans. You don't know we've set up this evening just for that. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, is we, all we've, been playing, we've, been, we've been playing the long game. <laughs> That, see, there's a there's a psychological thriller really where really someone discovers because Patterson's there for a little while and then yeah. he racks off and yeah. then it's all Fox and I was like these guys are gonna like this <laughs> um, no okay not intentional that's all right um, we've, we've gone over that. Um, the themes here um, you know of of obligation of trying to fix mistakes that are deep in your past and that kind of thing. Um, what was the crux of the idea of the favour? When did you go? What's the biggest favour that you would do for me, Sean? If I asked you to come to this place, it didn't, it didn't come out exactly like that, but it did come out of a kind of an, <coughs> a, an ongoing conversation that we had about if somebody comes to you who means a lot to you, who you might feel kind of in some way obligated to, hmm. um, and they say, will you do me a favour? Should you unconditionally say yes before you know what the favour is? Is that, mm. your, is that your obligation? Yeah. Or should you be more wary? And we couldn't agree on that. And we just mm. carried that. We just thought one day we've got to write about that, about yeah. somebody calling in a favour mm. and what that does. Um, and it wasn't until we came across the idea 
the kind of character of Jeans, who as Sean was saying, is this, she's, her life is on track. You know, mm. everything has gone according to plan. So she's had this kind of wild bit of her life in the past with Leon, but now she is just this kind of successful, driven, in control person, very dangerous in a Nicky French novel, you know, the, yeah, yeah. Again, you know, she thinks she's on right. solid ground. Yeah. And then out of bed, then and then the, just that thing about your first love and, oh. and how that burns its way into your consciousness and he comes out of her past and wrecks her present basically. I mean he do you know he as, as was being said, you know, he says, Will you do me a favour? And Jude says yes and she shouldn't have done that. Mm, mm. And it's, I don't want to spoil the end scene, but obviously you know what it is. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's about, can, can, can you really ever know someone? You know, you, you well, I think that's, that is, I mean, you could always say that quick thing is, is the kind of thriller that, we've, we, that we write. So we don't write about hunt for a terrorist or something like that yeah. it's what we're into is that that the people you're the people you're I mean we write about our anxieties the things that get us kind of creeped out or they're under our skin and we can't get rid of and and one of the things I think we feel is we don't have to worry about our enemies it's our friends we have to worry about <laughs> you, know, you, know, uh, you know because actually you saw me you know what all, the, you know, the, all these fears you have what, what, we, we're lucky what, what, what your friends say about you when you leave the room, you know, and, and, uh, and just, and the number of people who suddenly realise the person they've been married to for 20 years or 30 is, is living another life mm. or thinks something or is different from what they thought mm. or just, and, and that just, that kind of mystery is something we're endlessly fa fascinated mm -hmm. by. Mm -hmm. And that thing about can you really ever know somebody, thank goodness, no, you never get to the end of somebody, you, everyone remains a mystery. Um, and so that's both kind of creepy and sinister, but also it's what makes humans infinitely satisfying. So we partly write that kind of, it still often seems curious to me that we're, here we are collaborating and mm. we talk about, you know, we, we're married together, we collaborate together, we've got this kind of very intimate relationship and yet over and over again in our novels we're writing about essential loneliness of people and mm. how people are unknowable, we're all unknowable to each other, we have like moments of connection. But it's not just can you really ever know someone else. So it's also can you really ever know yourself. Mm. And and actually, I think that's one of the joys of a lot of psychological thrillers is that they take the kind of surface mm. of somebody and kind of crack them open, and you're trying to see. And people, you know, our protagonists over and again, what they do is terrible things happen, things they would never have wanted to happen, but it shows them parts of themselves, kind of whole landscapes. Mm. of themselves that they never knew existed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just want to tail off by saying something nice about the book because that's how you end an interview. <laughs> what I love about this, <laughs> I see I've done my research, um, is that it invites so much participation So, because you're following Jude so closely and the whole time you're going, well, this is what I would do. Yeah. Well, this is what I would do. Well, this is what I wouldn't do. And and so you're right next to her the whole time, following her choices and weighing them against your own. So I really enjoyed that bit. Um, just the whole thing as well. Just <laughs> well that that's bit very in particular. Tough. That's my favourite bit. Um, all right, now it's everyone's favourite bit. Um, it's audience questions. So I've left you about fifteen minutes to do that. Um, but before I hand over to you, um, how about a round of applause? Right. <laughs> Oh, thank you. So someone's going to take all those rules and put them up on your website. <laughs> it's all locked off now. Yeah, it's yeah. all in there. People will be talking about this in a hundred years' time. Um, uh, yes, audience questions. Now we did have things about audience questions, uh, housekeeping things. I have to repeat them. Yes, and we're not going to have a roving mic, no? Okay, so just be loud so I can hear. And try to keep them succinct was the other rule. And um, don't talk about yourself too much because... <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Oh, 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 <laughs> no, it's just me all night I've been like, oh, I have a story about that. Oh, I have a story. And, and then you, yeah, resist the urge. <laughs> Stay strong. Um, no, so does anyone have a question? Yep. Yes. Do you think this has made your marriage stronger because you have collaborated professionally? 
I really hope so. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Oh, so sorry. For everyone who's screening oh, in, the question was, do you think that this has made your marriage stronger um, going through this, doing this as a practice? I, I, I honestly think it's been a kind of, it's been another dimension. Um, I mean, almost our, you know, we started writing together. Sean's good at dates, and I'm very bad at dates, but quite shortly after we met, so almost our whole kind of life together has been spent writing together. And I mean, you know, things we you know we have kind of ups and downs. But I, but I would say that there's something so particularly revealing and intimate about writing with somebody else about seeing how their imagination is working. So there's a way in which I know Sean that I never would have known him. And the, the wonderful thing about that is he's really strange. The more I write with him, <laughs> the stranger he seems. And that's quite, that's, you yeah. know, so there's, there's a kind of, you know, and that's a good way of keeping a relationship going often. You, you're both very familiar with them, but you see them as unfamiliar as well. That's cool, that's yeah. cool. Have you got anything to add, Sean? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Well, no. I, I just, well, if you, I mean, when I, if the, the, I'm going to have a really scary statistic now because actually, so we've, I think we've written 26 books together. Wow. We, we write about we write about a book a year, and so if if you do the math, it's um, I think it's almost three million words we've written. Wow. And that and that's <laughs> that's thing. If you do something for long enough, it yeah. it builds up, yeah. and and this is sort of experience we've just been doing together going through this huge period and so of course I mean of course we don't know the counterfactual maybe if we'd never written anything together we'd have a much stronger marriage mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is we have just been been on this exploring thing this doing this together writing together rewriting each other together experiencing the world together and also when we're you know the huge amount of our time we're, we're not writing it's always you know could this be a story? You know, could, yeah. what, could we make use of this? And this, you know, it's just, it's just totally woven into the fabric of our of our, our relationship together. And we, so and, we, and we come to Australia together. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, we're happy, have you? <laughs> now there was a question down the front here from Sue Turnbull. I'm going to yes. out you as one of the most important uh, <laughs> book reviewers in the country. Here, Sue Thank Turnbull. You very much. See you in the papers. But here's the question: mm -hmm. Who is in charge of the plot? And who is in charge of pro style? <laughs> oh, okay. So the question was, who is in charge of plot, and who is in charge of pro style? Was it? Yeah. Right. Well, the um, the first one is we uh, with, with with story. The only thing about everyone, both of us have an absolute veto power. We if so, if, if one of them because we're, we're always just firing out suggestions, and most of them are rubbish or or, or so they can be really good but they're not right. And both the the other person has a complete right just to say no, and they. In the end, they don't even have to justify it. They just say, "No, I don't like that," wow. and that's really important. So, no, so there's no one really in charge in that way. And in charge of pro style, that's a re that, that's the mysterious thing, is because the, in, if you say you know pro style, if you read the things we write separately, we're completely different. And there was no plan about this except for the fact that we spend lots of time talking about how the you know what's this world about, what's this story about, what's this character going through. The thing that took us completely by surprise when we started to embark on this experiment was when we both wrote as this third person, Nikki French, and I find it completely bizarre. I, find, I cannot explain it. I don't know how it happens, but, you know. But you know, it, I think the idea of being in charge is just not on a conscious level. It's just something that has emerged. Mm. I mean, there is something about writing together so in a way it's a bit like writing on your own because we are writing on our own and then joining it up so it has this that same kind of kind of momentum about it but i i sometimes think that you know if i'm writing i'm kind of writing for myself i don't think i'm writing for a reader out there or trying to guess what a reader would want but i am also <coughs> writing to Sean or for Sean, if you like, and I think he's doing the same back. So maybe there's a kind of, I mean, I think the voice of Nikki French is quite intimate, and maybe it's maybe that's one of the reasons for it that the kind of prose style is partly about a kind of secret conversation yeah. that we're having. In so that maybe you're writing sense. for the same reader. I mean, that's, there we are. So that's maybe we're that's, writing yes, for the same yes. reader. Yeah. 
That's very intimate. Mm. It is, it is. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Other que- uh, we, uh, uh, okay, I've got two at the back. Did you still have one? Uh, We've got time. It's all right. Come back to me if you need one. All right. The gentleman yeah. in the back there. Uh, all in one, all in the first question, have you ever considered a menage or trois? <laughs> 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 question. No, wait, I, I get to repeat this. I get to repeat this. Go on, go on, <laughs> The question was... <laughs> With this pregnant pause that he delivered it with, have you ever considered a menage a toi? And sorry, nobody sorry, has ever asked that question before. Is this what you get offered when you come to a literary event? <laughs> <laughs> God, God, we can start coming here more often. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like to lower, I always like to lower the tone. Well, you know, yeah, I, oh, I can think, there is what, there's a really oh. favourite novel of mine called, called Q, a historical novel, which is written by not two, but five, five Italian oh, anarchists. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a great novel, and how, the, how they did it. I, yeah. the, the thought of, of having, well, in a way, there are, we are a man at a I mean, I think that, that, Nick, that Nicky French is a vivid third person in oh. our relationship. So, right. <laughs> oh, nice one. I managed, I, managed, I managed to get out of that one. It's French for foursome. Yeah. <laughs> if you were going to go into a la foursome, um, is there an author that you have have said, "Oh, we'd be good," or oh, "She'd be good"? We say that we've never even started thinking about men. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. All right, that's, that's okay. No, is fine. Nicky, Nicky, wonderful shot. <laughs> no, we have. Do you know? Lots of questions we have been asked. We have never been asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it. I salute you. All right, now that guy over there, you had a question? Character names are so important. How do you come up with your character names? Character names, they're so important. How oh, do you come up with they them? They are so important. And the trouble is, it gets more difficult the more novels you write because we've used up so many names. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a big thing that you know, we, we, yeah. we kind of we take a long time. I, uh, I'm going to give you one example. We, we, the character name for the, the, the central character in our series, which is an eight book series, so they're going to have to last eight books, and she's a psychotherapist. Frida and Klein. Frida Klein. Klein. So yeah. Frida Klein. She's a psychotherapist. She's um, slightly mysterious and hidden, which is why we had to write a series, because she, kind of, she was going to take more than one novel to reveal herself. And she's quite difficult. She's quite kind of rigorous, and on, and we thought, what what name sums that up? We wanted something a bit unusual, but quite plain and strong. And we wanted a name that you couldn't quite place. So is it kind of slightly German, kind of Frieda and Freud and Klein and Klein? We just wanted to have some somebody who you couldn't place by their name, because in I mean in the UK, especially in England. Especially names are so suggestive of kind of class and and age and things. So so that's an example of. And we took a long time to come up with Frida Klein. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean it, it's funny that I don't think enough attention is paid. People never very very rare in like reviews you'll see people commenting. Oh, the names weren't convincing, but I think there are right that you sometimes when a novel doesn't work. It, some of the character names aren't right, and yeah. and it's really strange. And and on, and there are also there are some writers who are very gifted at choosing names, yeah. and it's it's not. A, and you think that should be a really small talent, but it's yeah. a big talent, you know. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. And we and I genuinely we we even while you know when, when we're writing a book, we are constantly talking about you know. At certain points, however much you've planned it, you'll think maybe we could go this direction, change the story here. And also, we constantly think, are the names right? Does this yeah. name seem? Quite a hit of yeah. sort of also, a, yeah. because also, the name can't be Justice Riflebone, but yeah. it, uh, yeah. also yeah. Yeah. it can't yes, exactly, be like, exactly, like John yeah. Smith. It, it, it's a yeah. sort of a also, you in the middle. Also, your subconscious works in a strange way. So our very first book, The Memory Game, had actually another, had a really quite villainous uh, therapist. And, I, and the original name we had was an inc- was extremely similar to the to our the friend a friend of ours who was a therapist. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but also, 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 also it wasn't the, it would have been almost better the same, but it was a bit different. So it sounded as if we thought we're just going to change it a little 
<laughs> so he might not notice it. So, so right at the end, we managed to change it. Oh, right. Sorry, did you want to? No, I was just going to say, t -t today we went for a walk and we decided to change the name of one of our characters halfway through the novel. So not in this book. Not Too late for that. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, cool. All right. Anything else over here? Um, I've heard a few authors say that after they've published a book, they get a number of emails from people who are quite pedantically fact checking, like a cycle of books can do that. Um, I think, you know, on that Thursday, 1972, it's Miss Not a Fog. Do you get that? <laughs> oh, we do. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, the streamers. Um, so the question was, um, often uh, writers get uh, mail, fan mail, and, and, and people write in and, and they're very persnickety and they say, you know, particularly psychotherapists might write to you and say, oh, you know, this theory, you haven't done it right, or on this day in 1972, this happened. Um, so how do you deal with that kind of thing? Well, so we do, we, we absolutely do. And actually one of the things that we've discovered is that no matter how many times you go over your novel and then a copy editor goes over your novel, it's a bit like kind of a plough field and you still keep on turning up little bits of pottery. Um, there's, there, there are almost always little mistakes creeping. I mean, I think the worst, the, the thing that people wrote in most about was in, a, in a, one of our novels called The Red Room, there was a, there was a kind of sad and, and strange old man who, who we killed. Um, and, he, and he had a dog, and we forgot to do anything about his dog. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have to say, I, I also experienced this as a reader. I'm fascinated by the pedantry applying it to, to literature and, and the famous books that have terrible mistakes in. So I'm going to come. My, probably everyone will know this. Do you know the um, you know the Lord of the Flies, where one of the key moments is, of course, that these boys are on the island and they have they had to cr have create fire, and there's this poor boy Piggy who's a very short with it, and they steal his glasses and use it to to start the fire. But as anyone like me who's very short-sighted knows that uh, your glasses diverge the rays, they don't, they don't concentrate them. Oh, you, so, you, so you could stand there forever with your piggy's glasses and they wouldn't create a fire. What, what you need is a magnifying glass. So, uh, you know. uh, but by the time William Golding was told that, it was way too late to deal with the There's such a nice relationship demonstrated again accidentally because my first instinct, if you're collaborating and you get someone says, oh, this is a mistake, you go, oh, that was all him. Can I say that is that we do actually do have some rules, and that is one of our absolutely key rules. We've had we have never we all say we've never told anyone, including our children, who has written e anything in it. We no. never say, oh, and be because for just you know, there's a temptation. Someone said that didn't work. I say, well, you know, it's Nikki. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Nobody <laughs> <laughs> rule number six. Uh, <laughs> right. the reverse of that. Did rule number six? Put that one down. Um, I think we have time for one more. If there's someone who has a burning, yeah, burning question, you first one. Um, so it's probably this is something you've been asked before, but um, I've never been able to let go of Frida Klein. Is there any chance we're going to meet? Are there any? Is there any chance of more Frida Klein's? That was the question. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you. So, when we first came up with the idea of Frida, we knew. We first of all knew that she could only survive a certain number of novels because she's not a detective. We, need, we needed to find a, a, a kind of good reason that she's dragged out of a consulting room into the world. And that wouldn't have, you, you can't continue that for kind of 20 or 30 novels, you can't make her in. And the other thing that we, we just had a, we had an overarching story and we knew it was gonna begin in novel one and end in novel eight. I mean, there are seven days of the week and they, they're all named after the days of the week, but there are eight novels, so that's a bit confusing. So in Day of the Dead, the final novel, it kind of, it comes to a climax, and we knew, always knew that was going to be. And we wanted also to keep Frida quite mysterious. I mean, we we didn't want to kind of. And we wanted to leave her before people wanted us to leave her. So I am really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to lead up to. <laughs> but I do think she's out there somewhere. You know, we we kind of think about her. I mean, when we were writing the Frida Klein books, we would. I mean, we. We spent so much time with her, we knew her so well, and she knew us really 
well. And we would, we would kind of often say to each other, what would Frida do? What would Frida think about this? And we still sometimes think about her like that. She's a kind of real person in our, in our lives. No. But sorry. <laughs> Maybe one day. All right. Actually, never say never. I mean, as soon as you say never, you have to do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now listen, we have to wrap it up, but the book is The Favour, okay? And there are others for sale too um, in the other room. And I didn't ask this, will you be signing? Yeah. Okay, good. If, yeah. good. The answer if, is if yeah. people want us to. <laughs> the answer is no, you don't want to ask. Um, they'll be signing and, and we'll be around. And I, I hope that you will join me one more time and thanking you so much, Nikki and Sean, Nikki French, for being here. Thank you.